In this video, I'm going to explain De Morgan's Laws for AP Computer Science A in Java notation. De Morgan's Laws are centered upon Boolean operations and Boolean expressions, so I'm going to cover that part first, then introduce De Morgan's Laws, and then I'm going to follow it up at the end with some examples in Eclipse. Let's begin with defining what is a Boolean. A Boolean represents true or false data in a Java program. In Java, there's actually eight different primitive data types, and Boolean is one of them. It's derived from the Boolean wrapper class of the same name, with a capital letter B. And it's installed by default. Uh, it comes from the java.lang package. But we don't need to do any special imports to use it. One common use is to create variables that store Boolean data. So in the center of your screen, I have two examples of variables being created that hold a Boolean value. So in this first statement, we are going to declare that we are going to store some Boolean information. We're going to label that information x, and we're going to set it initially to the value of true. And just to give you a second example, I have some another statement that says I'm going to need to store Boolean information. We're going to label that information y and set its initial value to false. Now a special note, this single equals sign here is a assignment operator. It stores information into a uh, variable declaration. Now below we can also create expressions that will evaluate or reduce to a true or false value. So I have two examples here. The expression 10 and then we are going to compare it with the less than operator to 20. So 10 less than 20 will evaluate to true by the computer. And conversely, we also have 30 less than 20. The computer will evaluate that expression as false because 30 is not less than 20. Now more often we're going to calculate whether a condition or a situation is true or false and then assign that result to a boolean variable. So like let's consider the following expression where a and b are integer values. So like maybe a is 10 and b is 10. This double equal sign here in the middle is an operator that tests if they are equal. And this expression would reduce to true when they are the same value and false when they're not. So we can actually combine a variable declaration like we did on the previous screen, like boolean is the same, and it can hold the value of whatever this expression reduces to. So just keep in mind that the single equal sign is an assignment operator. It is not saying that both sides of an equation are equal. It is actually setting a value. So on this right hand side, this expression would reduce to true or false, and then the result of that operation would be stored in this uh, is, the, is the same variable. Now, um, other possible situations that this might get used in is if is the same is true, then it's going to uh, do uh, A++ over here. And when it's false, this will get skipped. So an if statement executes uh, a block of code that is uh, in these curly braces over here if a condition is met, if this condition here in the middle is true. Now, uh, another thing I want to point out is that this little exclamation point here is the not operator. What that does is it reverses a true to a false and a false to a true. So if they're not the same is what this condition is is saying here. If they're not the same then reduce b by 1 so b minus minus is going to make it decrement or go down by 1 whereas if they are the same a will increase. a is going to go up by 1. Java allows us to combine boolean expressions using and, or, and not operators. An AND operator tests whether both conditions are met and will evaluate to true when they both evaluate to true. So for example, this 
x double equals 5 is the first condition. Then I have an AND operator, which the AND operator in Java is done with the double ampersand. And then I have a second condition on the right-hand side of it, y double equals 6. If x is 5 and y is 6, then both sides of this are true, and the entire expression will reduce to true. However, if one of them is false, then the entire operation will be false. So if x was 4, then the entire operation would be false. y would not even need to be tested. If y was 5, then the entire expression would be false. So both sides of an AND operation need to be met. In other words, they both need to be true for the whole expression to be true. Conversely, we have an OR operation. An OR operation only needs one of those two conditions to be met in order for the whole thing to be true. So if x in this example was 5, then the entire operation is true. Uh, it wouldn't even need to test the y double equals 6 because this one is the only thing that's needed to be true. Uh, however, if this is false, it will continue on and test if y is 6, and if it is, then the entire thing will be true. If it's not, then the whole thing will be false. A third option would be the not operator. The not operator, as I described before, is just going to reverse a true to false and a false to true. So if x is 0, then the expression in the parentheses is true, and this uh, exclamation point would then distribute onto that true expression, making it false. And if x was uh, a number other than 0, such as 10, uh, it would, this uh, exclamation point would distribute to the false evaluation and uh, reverse it to true. So let's now introduce De Morgan's laws in Java notation. And in the expressions that I'm going to show you here, P and Q are just simply Boolean values. So you could substitute in for them the words true or false anywhere. Um, so the first one is the expression not, and then whatever uh, this evaluates to in the parentheses, P and Q, is the same as saying not P or not Q. And conversely, uh, not whatever the P or Q expression inside the parentheses reverses to is the same as not P and not Q. So knowing that basically each one of these uh, expressions is a different form of the other, you can write these expressions one way or the other and it becomes the programmer's preference on which one to use. However, distributing the not operator tends to create more readable code because there's fewer symbols. So for instance, if I wrote an expression like x is greater than 5 and x is less than 10, that's more readable than uh, this version, which would be equivalent but has three more symbols in it. So let's put these concepts together in Eclipse. Let's pretend we're making a program that will calculate if somebody can afford to buy pizza versus pizza with salad. So we'll say that the cash that they can spend is $10 and we'll arbitrarily decide that the pizza costs $8 and the salad costs $3. So in this little scenario, we know ahead of time that they can afford to buy pizza, but they can't get pizza and salad, sadly. So the variable P will hold the value of true. So can buy pizza will reduce or evaluate to the value of true, and Q will evaluate to the value of false. So uh, we're going to put together the equation, that's De Morgan's Law, of not and then the parentheses here is going to hold the expression P and Q. So P is true, Q is false since uh, we know that the AND operator requires both of them to be true, to evaluate as true, this will evaluate to false, but the not operator is going to reverse that to true. So this is going to hold the value of true. 
Now over here, we know that the equivalent form of that is not p, which we know p is true, is going to reverse to false, or not q, which we know q is, is false, will reverse to true. All we need is one of these to be true, which this side will be, to have them both be true. So our expectation here is that both the Boolean de Morgan 1 and de Morgan 2 are actually equivalent forms of the same expression. So if I push play here, you'll say, yes, I can buy the pizza, and no, I cannot buy pizza and salad, but true is the same as true, means that in this if statement here, p was true, so I could buy the pizza, but q was false. I can't buy both pizza and salad. But you can see that the values stored in De Morgan 1 and De Morgan 2 are both true because this equation is equivalent on both sides. So now if I ran the other version of De Morgan's laws, which is this one right here, we have the same setup, same amount of cash. Can I buy a pizza at $8, but can I also buy a pizza and salad at uh, $11? This one's going to basically tell me the same thing because these are equivalent uh, forms. So yes, I can buy pizza, but no, I cannot buy pizza and salad. But these two would evaluate as false when we combine those expressions because um, the inner part of this is true or false. True would be the result of the inner expression. The not operator is going to reverse that to false. So De Morgan 1 holds false. And then I would also have the equivalent form, which is not P, and we know that um, P is true, so it reverses to false, and Q is false, which reverses to true. Now, uh, this AND operator requires both of them to be true, which is not the case, so this is going to evaluate as false. So this one is false, and this one is false. And we know because of De Morgan's laws that these are equivalent forms. So that's why we get this result over here.